is Amanda Grattan with Mrs. U.S. Universal 2013 to the show. Amanda, how are you doing this evening? I am doing really well. Thank you so much for having me. Well, you know, I'm really excited that you are on the show, you know, especially when there's this incredible time difference <laughs> between the East Coast and, and Arizona. So I do appreciate you taking time out in the middle of your day to Hey, okay, that's spend okay. Time I'm over at work and <laughs> I'm, I'm over at work, and I've just locked myself in one of the offices. I told everybody, leave me alone for a little while. I have something to do. <laughs> She's trying to speak to some passionate enthusiasts. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so, Amanda, let me just tell you, when I first saw your picture, when I became acquainted with you, I happened to come across the Mrs. Universe website and um, was really excited to see that we had a Mrs. U.S. Um, Universal. And when I saw your picture, I was like, oh, my gosh, this woman is just breathtakingly beautiful. So, I mean, I just want to ask you, um, how how are you able to just balance life with that? I mean, do you often contact people that are really just smitten with your beauty and they're not able to get past that at all? Well, first, thank you. That's a wonderful compliment. Um, you know, Honestly, even in my day-to-day life, I I work with my husband, um, so what I do on a daily basis is not glamorous by any extent. Uh, Doing beauty pageants and being part of the pageant world is is kind of like my me time and my my time to really kind of shine and let myself be who I want to be. In (laughs) on a daily basis, though, I do go into different places and I'll, I'll have a lot of people that kind of look at me and go, "Wait a second, you you don't." do you mean to be here? Because you kind of don't belong here. Um, my, my husband and I run a, a diesel repair shop, and my husband's a diesel technician. Oh he has gosh. been for 16 years. And I run the day-to-day workings of our shop. So on a daily basis, you know, my hair is usually back in a ponytail. And, um, I mean, I, I do I do make myself look good to go out on a, a regular basis. But, um, you know, it's just I, I think that part of being a, a pageant girl is, you know, allowing myself to – keep myself in shape, and it, it helps me to stay focused on, you know, just keeping myself on the up and up, looking good all the time. There you go. And I, I'm sure if I walk into a diesel repair shop, I'll be like, why are you sitting behind this desk? I'm going to say the same thing. <laughs> but, you know, I, honestly, I really do I get like, that quite a bit. But, you know, I think that's really sassy, too, that a woman, you know, is able to flourish in a male-dominated field, you know. So I, that's one of the things I really love about pageant girls is that we really are so diverse and can do so many things. So that's really exciting to hear about that. So, you know, Amanda, let's, like, really just jump right into it. I, I'm, I'm really curious, what is your pageant background? Because um, I know that you actually have about 13 years' experience in it. So how did you get started in this glamorous world of pageantry? You know, I grew up being one of those little girls that when Miss America would come on TV or Miss United States, the whole world came to a stop. I had to, you know, get my bowl of popcorn and sit down in front of the TV, and everybody had to be quiet. Um, You know, I would sit there and I would watch, and I just, I loved every aspect of of watching pageants. Now, in school, um, I'll be the first to admit, I was not always the greatest on keeping my grades up, so that was one of those things where my mom sort of told me, you know, (laughs) If you if you pull really good grades, you can get involved in pageants. But if not, you know, it's, you know, kind of you have to balance things out. So I didn't start doing pageants until after high school. And um, actually, I didn't have my first title until after I got married. My husband and I got married when we were 20. So it was probably within six months after we got married that, um, you know, it was kind of one of those things where I thought, I've always wanted to do this. So mm-hmm. what's holding me back now? So I, I went online and I started looking into some different pageant systems and I started talking to some people and um, I realized that, you know, even though in the, the Miss Divisions and Teen Divisions there's a lot of scholarship programs that go along with stuff, uh, when you get into the Misses, it's all about volunteering and giving back and philanthropy and being a voice for, you know, different organizations. And that was something that really drove me to my first title, um, I, I think my very first title was Mrs. Illinois because my husband and I both grew up in Chicago. And um, I was Mrs. Illinois with the Mrs. Globe pageant system. And um, things just kind of escalated from there. I just really realized, you know, how sometimes you can have a, a crown and a banner as a catalyst to, you know, really make a difference in your community, in your state, and ultimately, you know, across the nation and around the world. 
I mean, you're absolutely right. I tell people all the time that pageant queen is the best unofficial sorority, um, you know, that is putting in the most community service hours. I mean, that's, that's really what we do. I mean, and the great thing is we're able to do it looking fabulous and with a crown on our head. I mean, what better way <laughs> of our community to, to be totally glammed up, you know? So, okay, well, then what made you decide to actually compete for the title of Mrs. U.S. Universal, because I understand you are the very first queen um, in this system. So what made you decide to go for this new system? I mean, because there's new systems springing up every single day. So what made you choose this one? Well, you know what? Um, I had actually, a uh, funny story, about a year ago I had kind of decided that I was going to take some time off of doing pageants. And I was out, um, I was out in Queen Creek, and I was actually the one who was putting together and hosting a fashion show for a charity organization. And a friend of mine had come to attend the event, and then she was also going to be one of the fashion models for me. And we were talking about stuff, and she, she introduced me to this new pageant system, and she said, you know, listen, I'm going to be doing this in the news division, and, you know, it's, it's really a great organization, and, you know, it's something that you should probably think about sometime. And I thought, oh, you know, maybe, maybe in the future I'll, I'll consider it. And then the more that I thought about it, I was like, you know, I don't know. Sometimes when someone says something to you, it kind of resonates somewhere and you keep hearing it over and over. And I talked to her a little bit more about it, and I thought, you know what, okay, maybe I'll, I'll just give it a try. I'll just do it. I'll go for it. So I had actually um, taken the title of Mrs. Arizona U.S. Universal in, I want to say, the end of December or the beginning of January. And I'll tell you, I mean, it's just, it's been a blessing. It's a, a fantastic system. Um, wonderful women involved, uh, great support system, great communication, the director is fabulous, and I'm so very glad that my friend Liz was the one who uh, kind of gave me that little jump start to, you know, hey, let me introduce you to this. So, mm -hmm. You wouldn't happen to be speaking about the fabulous Liz Everett. Are you, are you today? You're talking about? No, I'm actually talking about the fabulous Liz Fogg. Well, there we go. Yes, that's the next one. <laughs> so very great pageant women, absolutely. I know them from Facebook. It's so funny how with Facebook you just feel like you know people, you know, and then when you finally meet them in person, it's like, man, I've known you for like three or four years, you know, via social media. So that's always fun. And, and it's exciting that you were able to connect because of somebody that is really connected in the pageant world. So let me just ask you, you know, when you're prepared, when we're preparing for a pageant, we are always working out and, you know, things like that. What's the first thing that you did after you were crowned? Oh, let me see. The first thing that I did, um, yeah, it probably was actually setting up times with my trainer again. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Oh, really? Um, oh, that's why we had to prepare it, for international. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely one of those things where I thought, okay, you know, it's just, right back into uh, a regular routine. Now, I do work out at home on a regular basis, but if I'm preparing for, you know, being up on a stage, being in front of people, um, you know, that's, that's definitely the first thing that's on my list is, okay, let's call the trainer again. Let's get back in the gym. Absolutely, absolutely. So, let, I mean, let's talk about um, your international experience. I mean, it took place in Aruba. Oh, my goodness. And so, yeah. you know, talk to us, what, what's it like competing for a title on that level? Um, you know, I try really hard not to let it get into my head exactly what the magnitude of it is, um, because it could be quite intimidating, especially when you consider that, you know, you're not just competing on a state level, you're not competing on a national level, but now you're actually competing with women who have traveled from all around the world to come together for this competition. Um, you know, every every competition that I do, I've I've told myself from a long time ago that, you know, I save the competition for the stage. I'm there to, mm -hmm. you know, connect with people and make friends because we all go into this knowing that there's only going to be one crown and one title given out. So, you know, you can make what you will of the rest of it, but I go there to, you know, make friends, make connections, you know, be with women, be with women that are of like mind. And so, um, you know, honestly, it was it was a very fun experience, and this I think was one of the very first times that I competed where I was not nervous at all, at all. I and at one point, I kind of thought to myself, like, is there something wrong right now? Because I don't even have the butterflies in the stomach. It was just more excitement. I was so excited to be there with everybody. I was so excited to be representing the United States. Um, you know, it was just it was more about the 
the exciting experience than anything. And, you know, and, and that worked for you because you were actually third runner-up. I mean, that's just amazing. And, you know, in addition to you being the very first Mrs. U.S. Universal, I mean, I, I believe you were the first person to represent at the international pageant. Am I correct in that? Yes, as Mrs. U.S. Universal, I was the first one, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, talk about making a great splash on an international stage. Congratulations to you. Definitely. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm, I'm very proud of where I came. I wouldn't have wanted to be a judge because, let me tell you, after spending eight days with all of those wonderful women, um, it, I can see exactly, you know, why the winner won. She was a, a wonderful person, but everybody out there was. So I, I definitely would not have wanted to be a judge. Awesome, awesome. And it's nice that you're able to walk away and say that and that there aren't sour grapes like, you know, people always think that women have in pageantry, and that's not always the case. I mean, I think if you go in there with the right attitude, you know, then you are able to walk away um, from the experience having enjoyed the entire experience. I mean, because to travel to Aruba, you know, that's a beautiful experience all by itself, darling, you know? So, yeah. yeah. So how are you spending... How are you spending the rest of your reign? Um, you know, now you're you're back here in the States, and I understand that you love working with animals. I know you do a lot of volunteer work with that. Um, how will you be spending the rest of your reign as Mrs. U.S.? The rest of my reign as Mrs. U.S. is going to be um, filled with a lot of events, a lot of volunteering. Uh, I try to book up almost every weekend of mine with some kind of function where I'm either, you know, volunteering with an organization or, you know, contributing in some way. Um, while I was Mrs. Arizona, I, I believe I made 47 appearances just within the six months that I had that title. And, nice. um, you know, I, I like to busy myself with doing the good that Crown and Banner can bring. Awesome, awesome. And I love it's also going to be a matter of helping to build, um, build helping to build more, oh, oh, I have lots of words right now. Uh, promoting the system. Since I was, since I am the first one that will be crowning the next, um, you know, it's also a matter of helping to, you know, let people know about the pageant system and make them more familiar with who we are and what we're all about. Absolutely. I mean, you know, a lot of queens, I think they go into pageantry with the wrong idea. But at the end of it, once you have that crown, you're right. Our, our job is to promote a system and it is to create awareness and a buzz about that particular system, and I think that you're doing a great job with that. You're absolutely doing a great job with that. Well, how can people connect you. with you? Um, I don't know if you're online or on Facebook. You know, how can people connect with you and learn more about the pageant system? Yes, um, there. I do have my own um, Mrs. U.S. Universal 2013 Facebook page, and there is a U.S. Universal Facebook page, and you can also find us at usuniversalpageants.com. And all of the information about uh, your, your state and your local titles, it's all on there and how to get involved and where to start up if you're interested in joining us. Awesome. Well, awesome. Amanda, thank you so much for taking time out and setting yourself in an office somewhere. I appreciate you um, just connecting with the, the listeners of Pageant Insider Radio. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, you're very welcome. I wish you much luck. I can't wait to meet you in person very soon. Thank you. I know. I can't wait to meet you either. Yes, thank you so much. And for everybody that's been listening, you know, I tell you all the time, we always have really incredible guests that are on, and I absolutely love it when we can have national winners on here sharing their experience and you have the opportunity to just hear how they how they interact and, and all of those great things. So that was Amanda Grad, Mrs. U.S. Universal 2013. Make sure you connect with her by going to U.S. Universal Pageant with an S. Dot com. You can also connect with her on Facebook as well.